just want to play video games and I have to record a video. All right, I'm starting now. Say hi. hi. <laughs> oh, shoot. Hello. <laughs> Hello, as you can tell from the title, I did something a little crazy that, especially based off of how much work went into this, I hope you really love it. Have you ever heard of a temperature blanket? If you haven't, I'll explain. And if you have, bear with me for a moment. A temperature blanket, popular with crocheters and knitters, is where you record the temperature for every day of a year. When you crochet or knit a project, you build that project with one line of knots at a time. So the idea behind a temperature blanket is that the blanket will consist of 365 lines, one line per day of the year. And the color of yarn you use per line would correspond with the color that represents a range of temperatures. So cold temperatures could be blue, hot temperatures be red, average temperatures be green or orange and so on. But here on my channel, we like to indigenize things as well as be difficult for no apparent reason. So instead of crocheting a temperature blanket, why not make a temperature ribbon skirt? Recording the temperature of every day for a year, not with yarn, but with different colors of ribbon representing the temperature. Now, I will say you're supposed to make this throughout the year, adding one day at a time. And if you would like to make your own temperature ribbon skirt, that's how I would advise you to do it. But as the one with the YouTube channel and the patience of a child who does not want to wait a whole year, I'm doing this all at once. So if you would like to see how I made a temperature ribbon skirt, let's get into it. Now, I obviously can't predict what the temperature will be every day in 2023, so to make a skirt all at once, I need to look back at 2022. I went to the nationalweatherservice.gov website and entered the information for my area. Side note, I'm in the United Snakes, so for those of you ribbon skirt wearing natives in other countries, you might have to find the website of your National Weather Service. Once I selected my area, I found the link to past weather data, which brought up a table from which I had to select what data I wanted from when. In this case, I wanted temperature data from 2022. Now that I have my data, I organized just how I'm going to do this project. First, I found a source of ribbons and viewed what color options they had, so I knew what I had to work with. Then I assigned each color a temperature range. I will of course have the ribbon linked in the description along with the colors and their ranges. However, please note my ranges make sense for my region. The temperatures I experience here in Northern Michigan won't be the same for someone in California. Here I experience temperatures lower than negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit and our temperature never hits 100 or more. I also assigned 71 to 80 degrees, a shade of red, because that range feels hot to us. <laughs> Whereas for you, it might be more of an orange. Now you notice that the weather service will give a temperature range for the day. I came up with a solution that I decided would work best for my skirt. For the months December, January, and February, I found the coldest recorded temperature. On the contrast, for the months June, July, and August, I found the hottest recorded temperature. For the spring and fall months, I did a little math to find the average temperature for each day. You'll hear me talk about the width of the ribbon in a bit, but I will note here as well that I got 3 16th of an inch wide ribbon. I would have preferred a smaller ribbon and would not suggest going any bigger and for good reason. 365 days of a year means 365 ribbons, and even the smallest available ribbon would result in a skirt being long enough to cover your whole body, precisely why people crochet temperature blankets and not anything else. To combat this problem, I chose to split the year in half. Six months of ribbon would be attached to one side of the skirt, in the remaining six months to the other side of the skirt. So before we understood each line representing one day of the year, each line will actually be two days of the year, exactly six months apart. So at the hem, we will find January 1st and December 31st. The next line will be January 2nd and December 30th, then January 3rd and December 29th, January 4th and December 28th, and so on. 
The ribbon at the very top of the skirt will be July 1st and 2nd. If you're following along, you would begin at January 1st and work your way up to July 1st. Then place July 2nd on the other side and work your way back down to December 31st. It is really important that you match every ribbon up or else your hem or waistline can get thrown off very easily. With the amount of ribbons we're adding, small gaps or overlaps can add up quickly. One more thing before we get to the construction of the skirt. I'm sure some of you might want to know some math, especially if you're not the same height as me, which is 5'6". The decimal figure of 3 16th of an inch is 0 0.1875. I multiplied that by 365, which gave me 68.4. As I said a few moments ago, 68 and a half inches is too long for a skirt, so we must split it into six months on each side. So I divided 68.4 and half, which gave me 34.2 inches. With the waistband, the skirt will be around 36 inches long. If you need the skirt to be shorter, either try finding smaller ribbon or overlap the ribbon. Now, let's make this thing. So, first thing, we have the fabric and a whole lot of ribbon. I chose a flannel back satin in black. I like it because it's shiny like satin, but soft on the inside, strong, and it's not stretchy. For the ribbon, I chose 11 different colors to each represent a temperature range, and then I labeled the spools accordingly. The ribbons are 3 8 of an inch, and you can't go any wider than that because then a full year of ribbons wouldn't fit on your skirt. I did order one color at a bigger size because they didn't have the color in 3 8 of an inch. I just overlapped the next ribbon onto the larger size, but this practice did end up throwing me off quite a bit and I'd have to keep fixing it. So I would highly recommend avoiding getting a different size just for its color. It's not worth it. I recommend sewing a little legend inside of your skirt near the hem before applying any ribbon so that in the future, if you ever need a reminder of which colors represent what temperature range, all you have to do is flip up the bottom of your skirt a bit and refer to the legend. Don't worry about the thread holding the legend on because you'll be covering it up with ribbon anyways. Here you see me cutting my fabric into two panels, a front and a back. The panels are simple rectangles to form a straight skirt. While we're cutting the width here, I recommend not cutting the length of your skirt until you've finished applying your ribbon. Imagine spending an entire year applying ribbon just to not leave yourself enough room for it. I will begin applying my ribbon right at the hem of the skirt. So to account for the hem, I am measuring one inch from the edge of the fabric. That is where I'll place my first ribbon to represent January 1st. And of course, if you recall, by the end of this project, the hem will also represent December 31st. Since we want two ribbons on either side of the skirt panel, we're gonna want them to meet in the middle. So, yet another strong recommendation I have, and believe me, there's probably more to come, is to mark the middle of the panel all the way up. You see me doing this here, but along the way I thought those pins were in the way, so I took them out, figuring I could just use the previous laid down ribbon as a guide. But each time I laid down a ribbon, I strayed from the middle of the panel little by little until I was over an inch off. And I did this multiple times. <laughs> so the moral of the story, kids, do as I say and not as I do. Now to apply the ribbon. <laughs> January 1st, 2022 was 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So with the ribbon that represents one to 10 degrees, I'm laying it down at the one inch hem allowance. Side note, I know the spool said zero to 10 degrees, but I changed all the ranges from one to 10 because it made more sense that way. Reminder that I listed my temperature ranges in the description. Here I'm marking January 1st after applying its ribbon to both front and back panels. The next two days are three and six degrees Fahrenheit, so they'll be the same color as the first ribbon. On January 4th, it was 22 degrees that day, so the next ribbon will be a different color.
Throughout the project, I did change the thread to match the ribbon. I don't normally do that, but the ribbon is only 3 8 wide and I'm straight stitching down the center of it instead of zigzagging on the edges of it like I typically do. So I didn't want the thread to distract from the color of the ribbon. This did add quite a bit of time to the project, but I found it worth it. Satin ribbon does like to fray, so remember to melt the edges every few ribbons. Just be careful not to catch the fabric. And finally, a full day for me and two seconds for you later. This is all of January. Okay, so I went back and forth on how I was going to do this, but I feel like I really want to get started on the other side or else the skirt's going to take me absolutely forever. <laughs> So I have the first available day that I am able to start on the other six months. This portion has not happened yet. This ribbon here is yesterday. Um, so that way I have all of the data for the remainder of the skirt. And um, in order to sort of have it lined up so that what hasn't happened yet will continue to line up with these ribbons, I uh, I measured how far away the bottom of this ribbon was um, right here and then on the edge and matched it because it's it's a little lower right here than it is here I don't I don't know how I messed that up but um, I'm clearly too far into this project to start over so yeah I am going to sew this on um, and I may have talked about this already, I don't know at this point yet, but this ribbon is the only one that is this thick. And so the next row is just gonna kind of like, eh, if I can get it, oh my God. Okay, it's just gonna kind of like go over. Focus, it's gonna go over half of it. I'm just gonna get rolling, I'm delirious at this point. Okay, so here's a little real-time update of the temperature skirt. Um, I have about three months done. I'm just three days shy of finishing November, um, and those are the most recent November days at the end, and they go right here. Um, so two problems that I've identified. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this part. This part just hasn't happened yet. Um, I mean, today is probably like right here. but. If you can see, I am sort of overlapping the ribbons on top of the other. And in order to continue that pattern right here, I'm gonna have to like put the ribbons underneath somehow. And um, I don't feel like doing that just yet. So I'm gonna figure that out. Problem number two, because I abandoned perfection and just started eyeballing things, these are way off centered. <laughs> Um, so I folded the skirt in half and found the center point about right here on one side and then the other side is actually way worse. The center point is right here. So I'm just gonna work my way back to um, joining the ribbons in the middle and then I think what I'm gonna do, this might change, but as of right now I think I'm gonna get like a thick black ribbon that kind of matches the cyan and run that down the middle to hide this because my original plan I abandoned that real quickly after I realized how much work it would add but yeah this is what I have so far um I'm going to get back to work I guess
Don't mind me showing off my custom Christmas sweater. Now it's time to finish off the year. This footage is from December 22nd, so here I'm finding where I should lay down the ribbon for December 21st. And then I'm measuring from the hem as a guide in order to lay that ribbon straight. And then from there, I will fill in the gap. I did it this way because it made it easier to deal with the fact that I slightly overlap ribbons over each other. This way allowed me to only have to fiddle with that once instead of every single ribbon. So here I'm sort of trying the skirt on my body to see how much fabric I should leave at the top. With the ribbon going all the way down to my ankles, the top of the ribbon sits at the top of my hips. So I'm only able to leave enough fabric to encase the waistband. If you're taller or chose smaller ribbons, you may be able to leave more fabric between the ribbon and the waistband. I'm 5'6", if that helps. <laughs> However many inches or so of fabric you decide to leave, Measure that distance from the top of the ribbon, mark, and cut. Even if the top ribbons seem to lay slightly crooked like mine did, mine ended up slightly higher in the center somehow, this will help straighten them up. Here you see me laying the two panels together so I can cut the second panel using the first panel as a reference. I'm doing this instead of simply repeating the steps I just did for panel one, because if my ribbons are laid slightly different on each panel, I could end up cutting the second panel longer or shorter than the first panel. Doing this guarantees that my panels will be both the same length. Now to cover up the edges of ribbon at the center of the skirt, as well as how uneven they are at the center, <laughs> I'm pinning a wide black satin ribbon down the center from the top of the waist all the way down to the hem. I did end up using two widths of this ribbon with a wider ribbon on the back panel. This was partly a design choice and partly because the ribbon I attached to the front wasn't wide enough to hide the unevenness on the back panel. <laughs> I then went back to my preferred ways of stitching the ribbon on by zigzag stitching the edge of the ribbon on both sides. I use black thread here too. And then of course, you know your girl loves to search the edges of my fabric. We don't have time for fraying here. The next step is to attach the side seams, which you probably know how to do. But I do want to note that I'm not stitching the seams all the way to the hem. I'm leaving an open slit at the bottom as this is a straight skirt instead of an A-line skirt with a wide hem. Leaving the slit will allow me to be able to walk in the skirt. Quick note while you watch me iron and attach the waistband, if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I'm a big proponent for putting pockets in your ribbon skirts. However, I chose not to put pockets in this skirt, and this is because I believe that due to the weight and thickness that this volume of ribbons adds to the skirt, the pockets wouldn't lay flat and shut. The weight of the ribbons could basically pull the pockets open permanently. Now I could be wrong, but I just didn't want to risk it. If you're following along on your skirt, now would be the time to do your hem. After that, I chose to line the edges of the side slits with bias tape. So I just wanted to show you how I did the hem. So the hem is right at the bottom of the ribbon. 
um, I just used the same collar thread as the ribbon there so that you wouldn't see the thread. And the hem is folded up just once. I didn't do a rolled hem or anything. Um, fray block your fabric before you do this. Mine is fray blocked as it's the, the edge of the fabric as I purchased it. Um, and this is what I got so far. It's not completely finished. I think I'm just going to pin this up for now because I want to wear this tomorrow and I still need to get today and tomorrow's temperatures on there. I just don't have that data yet. So tomorrow I'll be wearing this to a powwow. I'm so excited. And you know, that's tomorrow for me, but in like five seconds for you. So but I thank you for watching, and I hope some of you will decide to make a temperature skirt yourself. I'd love to see it if you do. Um, and let's get to the final product. Mama Peak Webman.